For years, as a hand tool woodworker, I have said that the bandsaw is the one power tool I just do not want to deal with that. Man, because of how I use it, more as a hand tool. I mean, I do own really nice hand saws and panel saws, mainly the difference is size and purpose, uh, and, but I very rarely use them. Uh, I've never really used the hand saw in my real work, uh, and I'll use a crosscut saw mainly for breaking down 2x12s, but even then, ever since I got a cordless jigsaw, I haven't even done that. This just kind of sits in the back of my truck for emergencies whenever I go to a big box store. It's the bandsaw that eliminates this kind of work because I don't find this fun. You do not get a figure like mine doing a lot of heavy work. And I would rather get through the stuff and then do the funner stuff with my hand saws, the joinery. I mean, these I will never give up. There's no power tool substitute for the joinery side, but the grunt work, it really doesn't matter. Because most of the time when you're ripping something long and straight, that's not the last tool that's going to touch it. So if it's a little bit off or if it's rough, it's no big deal. Which means the bandsaw is perfect for that one. Burning electrons, not calories. And one of the reasons why I picked up this little 10 inch uh, bandsaw was because I use it as a hand tool. Uh, when I combine shops with my dad, you know, I put my jet in storage just in case but it's big enough, it takes up quite a bit of space, just like that one, and his is much better than the one I was using. But him being a wood turner, I find that he tends to bend teeth a lot and dulls blades a lot, so I just wanted to have a small bandsaw that I could turn around and do small cuts with the boxes stuff I make, and this is just perfect for that, and Dad doesn't use it, so he doesn't bend my teeth. I mentioned all this because today in our Throwback Thursday video, uh, I'm going to return to a video I did back in 2018, a little over four years ago, back when I had about 50,000 subs, and this particular video only got about 11,000 views. But it's one of the more important videos because it talks about skill, hand tool skill at the bandsaw, offering lots of tips and techniques for you to stay safe and actually get better results quickly. And in the four years since making that video, I'm still using the bandsaw at the same exact way. Hence me getting one just for next to my workbench. So I hope you enjoy this video. You pick up a few things on a safe ways to effectively use your bandsaw. Now, when you're working with a bandsaw, it's incredibly important that you have access all the way around it because there are a lot of instances where I find pulling my work to the blade is a lot safer and a lot more accurate. So I want to be able to walk around it fairly unobstructed. I have a fairly long hold hose on my uh, dust collector just for that purpose. Now one of the most common things I do with a, either a hand saw or my band saw is making long rip cuts because you're breaking down the wood. There is no reason why you can move the fence over and push it through. Just make sure you use some kind of push stick so that once you get through the back section, if you want to push it into the blade, you don't really care. I will say this, most of the time when I'm doing these cuts, I will start it here, but then I will pull it through on the back side so my hands never really approach this front section. But I also don't really use this fence very often unless it's a large enough board that I have to stand back quite a ways from the bandsaw. You know, a four to six foot board you're making a little slice off of. Most of the time, I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to position this finger on my bent, on my um, table at the exact distance I need. And then my thumb becomes a micro adjuster. Because when you put your thumb flat down way back here, you can kind of press down into your table and it will slightly move the back a little bit. You have this hand pressing all over here this way to give you somewhat of an adjustable fence that changes on the fly. So as you're feeding your work into your blade, you can make micro adjustments until the point where the back of it passes your thumb and then the thumb can use, you can use a thumb as a push stick to come on through your cut. Now if anything 
ever bad happen, just let go. Walk away. You can come back and turn it off in a second, but because the force is going down, there's nothing really making it dance, so you can actually let go of it and back away if you're scared for whatever reason. If your spidey senses start to tingling, just back off. But I want you to notice something. Not only am I focusing on cutting right next to the line, using the same rules you would use in a with a hand tool, but with a bandsaw, if I focus on the blade and the kerf behind it, as long as I keep the kerf hiding in the shadow of the blade, I know I'm cutting a straight line. So there you go, a completely straight cut done on the bandsaw, just as good as any handsaw could do it, you know, a rough coarse handsaw. I didn't get my hand anywhere near the blade, and at no point was my hand going into the blade. That's a key safety thing. Even when I'm turning curves, I never push my hand into the blade. It is always going around it. Let me pull out a bowl blank and show you that exact process. So I've got a nice little blow blank and I've laid out a circle out of chalk right here. But notice when I cut these things, I leave them a little bit long because I want something to grab on here. I want to be able to push it through the blades right here. But notice my effort is going around here or it's coming around this way. It is never pushing into the blade. So here we go. Watch the technique. Watch how my thumbs stay out. They're not tucked around here, which would mean it would be pushing into the blade, which I don't want to do. I want to keep my thumbs out. I've got corners on, and I rotate in a circle around the blade, never pushing into it. So I now got a nice little bowl blank and I didn't risk my fingers, thumbs, skin or anything like that on the bandsaw. Now joiner is another common thing I do freehand on the bandsaw. And you can use, use the same techniques I showed you for cutting straight lines as to cutting uh, joinery. But for example, I have a little finger joint recess cut out right here. On the bandsaw, I leave this half inch blade on there. There's no way I can turn that tight corner. So how can you do it? Once again, it's all a matter of using your fingers as a brace and controlling the angles with your thumbs and the other hand pushing on this way to go forward. And then I'm going to show you how to get these tight corners actually utilizing the teeth because the teeth are actually crossing over on each side. One to cut to one side, one to cut the other, and then the center tooth to scrape it out. But this is somewhat of a combination blade. I left the pencil line. There is no way I can turn that 90 degree corners, especially with a half inch blade, which I'm too lazy to ever replace. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect the corners with gradual curves and create a relief area for the blade to fit into. If you have a narrow channel, there's no reason why you couldn't use a set of the teeth to do that one. So once again, I'm going to use the same techniques. Come on, do both sides of my dado or narrow groove. Notice, once again, thumb back here, 
finger up, a pivot point up here. Now I can come in and you can kind of whittle it out. And to get rid of the very base, just go sideways, back and forth. And you can kind of shave down the very bottom like that to get a fairly square cut. Now if I am cutting a very long board, which is really kind of common for me, I'd cut a lot of 2x12s down uh, to get the nicer quarter sawn uh, board from that. Yes, I use a bandsaw. And I'm going to try and show you on a shorter board because I just don't want to waste boards. But what happens is I will start from this side using the fence. And I can take one hand to squeeze it against the fence and one hand to push it through. Eventually you're going to get to a point where even on a long board you kind of have a balance spot. Because we have about a foot and a half here and it bounces out. At which point in time I go to the other side and I drag it through. Because I find it a lot easier to drag it through. And it's a lot safer as the weight gets on this side of the, of the tape bandsaw. You don't want to be doing that last little bit, having you hold 8 feet of 2x12 material with your fingers and not get it cut. Remember, the idea is we never want to push into the blade, so if we can pull through, a lot safer. And I get about halfway through, and even on small board, I will come around and pull it through. You can put pressure on this side, and it does the same thing, pushing it this way. And you keep the board coming through. The bandsaw really is the closest thing to a hand tool in the power tool realm because it does require finger dexterity, muscle memory, uh, eye-hand coordination, all the things we use with a handsaw, chisel, or something like that. That all happens here. The only thing that's stopped is the blade's moving. And the way the blade is moving, always in one direction, just like a handsaw, always cutting in one direction, gives you the same kind of results you would often find with a handsaw. So... Try it. Don't be scared of the bandsaw. It really is the most flexible tool you have out there. Uh, in fact, I went for probably a decade without even using a table saw, just doing everything on the handsaw, bandsaw, and hand tools.